Hey guys, Mish here, and today I have a study for you on meal frequency slash meal timing and how that affects how much you eat at the next meal and how hungry you are, how full you are, and various biological markers of fat burning. There's this big debate in diet and weight loss and fitness circles about meal frequency and how often you should be eating because bodybuilders and a lot of weight loss experts often advocate eating many small meals a day rather than the typical three big meals a day because they claim that this stokes the metabolic fire and makes you burn more calories, makes you feel less hungry, and makes you eat less overall. And so therefore their argument is that eating more frequent smaller meals is better for weight loss than eating fewer big meals. So this study was looking at that phenomenon in obese males. Unfortunately, there aren't very many of these studies in females, and I think that's because female hormones are much more complicated to study and they tend to make things much less clear and have much weirder effects with these kinds of manipulations. So this study focused on men. And what this study did was they took a group of obese men and had them eat a 700 calorie breakfast, either all in one sitting in 20 minutes, or have a quarter of it every hour over the course of four hours. So they were eating the same 700 calorie breakfast regardless, but it was just split up into either one big portion or split up into four smaller portions. And the breakfast was pretty typical American breakfast for some people, I guess. It was a croissant, white bread, strawberry jam, sugar, butter. I don't know why they just had sugar and butter. I guess they put them on the toast or something. And coffee and orange juice. So it would be pretty high carb, but the croissant and the butter make it pretty high fat and high carb, just in case people are interested in what the breakfast composition was. And then they had them rate their hunger and satiation and fullness levels on these fancy questionnaires throughout the day to see how these participants felt in terms of their appetite as a result of these two different styles of eating breakfast, either over the course of a long time in sort of a snack format or in a single big meal format. And then after this, at lunch, they had them eat from a big fancy buffet that was roughly split into high calorie and low calorie foods, which the participants didn't know about, but that was just the experimenters trying to sort of balance it. And the foods that were high calorie in the buffet were things like sausages and fried potatoes and cheese. And on the low calorie side were things like white bread and fruit and grated carrots, green beans, things like that. And one of the main things they were interested in was to see whether these participants ate more or less or the same from this big lunch buffet after the two different types of breakfast. Because presumably, if the fitness gurus are correct in that eating more frequently will make you less hungry and eat less, then what you should see is that these participants should eat less from that buffet. And they should also feel more full and less hungry according to these questionnaires they filled out. And so as expected, the participants who ate over the course of four hours felt less hungry and more satiated right before lunch because they had eaten the fourth portion of breakfast only an hour beforehand, whereas the group who had only had the single big breakfast meal had eaten four hours earlier. So I'm going to put the graphs up here because I feel like they're pretty cool and help make sense of it. So as you can see, their hunger and satiation levels sort of take different paths on the way to lunch, but after lunch they're all at the same level. So they sort of end up the same when you look at the area under the curve, which is a way that people often measure these types of things, but they just have different trajectories. So you can see the people who ate the really big breakfast had a really big boost in satiation right then, and then it gradually fell and got much lower before lunch, whereas the group who had the spread out breakfast never really got to that high point of satiation, but they were at more of a middle of the road level of satiation all throughout because they kept eating every hour. And the results show that the participants who had the more frequent, smaller breakfast meals over the course of four hours ate the same number of calories at the buffet, but they ate a higher proportion of high calorie foods than did the participants who had the one single big breakfast four hours before. And gram for gram, the participants who got the spread out breakfast ate a lower volume of food, presumably because their stomach was still pretty full from having had their fourth portion of breakfast only an hour before lunch, and so they ate less of these low-calorie healthy foods like carrots and fruit, and they ate more of these high-calorie foods like sausages and fried potatoes, and so this caused them to eat the same number of calories as the participants who had the big breakfast four hours earlier. So it looks like in this case, spreading out your meals actually made you eat 
worse in a way because you were less likely to eat the healthy things and more likely to eat the high calorie things and you ended up eating the same number of calories as the group who didn't have to spend all morning eating. And there's more! So while there were no differences in ghrelin and other hunger hormones overall, there was an increase in energy expenditure by the group who ate the single big breakfast. So for some reason, the group who had the big breakfast burned more calories over this four hour breakfast period than did the group who had four portions of breakfast. So these results actually suggest the opposite of what you might see fitness gurus posting articles about, because the metabolic fire, as they often put it, actually seems to go down when you have these spread out meals at least in obese participants, which presumably are the people who would care most about needing to lose weight, and therefore probably the most important pool of participants to study. And similarly, the group that ate the spread out breakfast had a lower level of fat burning before lunch, and overall they had a lower level of diet-induced thermogenesis. And what that is is that when you eat food, a certain amount of it gets used up in actually processing the food. So for example, when you eat carbs, 10 to 15% of those calories are actually used in order to digest the carbs. And what this means is that if you eat foods that have a high thermic effect, like protein and carbs, you're going to be burning off more of those calories naturally through the actual digestion of the food than you would if you ate more fatty foods, which have a much lower thermic effect. And so overall, it looks like eating the spread out breakfast actually lowered your diet-induced thermogenesis, which means you burned fewer calories in digesting the food. So when you have that big mongo single breakfast in the course of 20 minutes, four hours before lunch, you burned off more of those calories than you did if you ate the same amount of calories spread out over those four hours. Another big argument that people have used to suggest that eating more frequent meals might be better for weight loss is that eating an equivalent number of calories in smaller, more frequent meals releases less insulin overall than you get if you eat that same number of calories in one big meal. Insulin release actually gets in the way of fat burning and promotes storing fat. And so the idea here is that if you release less insulin overall, then you're probably going to be able to burn more fat and store less fat. And this study did find that they released less insulin overall. However, the group that ate the spread out breakfast had constant little spurts of insulin that kept them above a baseline level you would usually see fasting. Whereas the group that had the one big meal had a huge spike of insulin and then it went down during the fasting period between breakfast and lunch to baseline. And so the group that had the spread out breakfast did release less insulin overall, but it never got back to baseline because it was consistently elevated because they kept eating. According to the results of this study and others, it seems likely that this elevated low level of insulin actually is getting in the way of fat burning more than the initial big spike you get from one meal. Because if you eat one big meal, your insulin is able to go back down to baseline for a while before you eat the next one and you can get a lot of fat burned then. However, when you eat that, those spread out meals over the course of four hours eating every hour, your insulin never gets back down to baseline, and so you never get back into that fat burning zone. So it looks like it's possible that eating meals more frequently might actually get in the way of weight loss. It might actually prevent you from being able to burn fat because you always have low level elevation of insulin. So the take home of this study is that while eating meals more spread out over the course of four hours did lower your hunger levels before lunch and increase feelings of fullness and satiation before lunch, it did not change the amount of calories people ate at lunch, and it actually made them choose more unhealthy foods instead of healthy foods. Or rather, it made them choose more high calorie or high energy density foods compared to low calorie or low energy density foods. So it looks like people were able to adjust the volume of the food they ate, so they ate less volume of food, because instead of carrots, they were eating sausages and fried potatoes. So they ate less volume, but they still ate the same number of calories because they chose these high energy density foods. So if you're like me and you prefer eating three big meals a day instead of a bunch of little ones, that's not only not getting in the way of your weight loss, it might actually be better for your weight loss than eating a bunch of small meals spread out throughout the day. So consider that another fitness myth busted. Because the advice that is given to people trying to lose weight, many of which are obese, is to eat more frequently and eat smaller meals to help them lose weight. This might actually be getting in the way of their weight loss. It might actually be hurting. And if people are interested, I can do a part two on this with normal weight slash lean men, because there are some different results there. And I'm also gonna try to look for a study on women that is as thorough as this one was, but they're hard to come by, so wish me luck.
Also, I recently made a Patreon account, and I would really appreciate it if you could help me make these videos by pledging a dollar or two for every time I make a video. If you're interested, just check out the link below, and I'd really, really appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching, and please share and subscribe to see more videos.